If you have PCOS and you're wondering if a protein powder may be a good idea for you or you don't know which protein powder you should choose, you need to watch this video. Hi, my name is Sam. I'm a clinical nutritionist with a special interest in PCOS. Each week, I'm bringing you simple, actionable nuggets of information about PCOS. I'll talk to you about how you can support your symptoms using the Nourish Natural Health's PCOS protocol. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's dive in. First, we need to understand how protein influences PCOS on a biochemical level and this will actually help you to decide which protein powder is for you. So first I want to talk about protein's role in hormonal regulation. So let's think of protein as a bunch of mini building blocks. In order for the protein to be absorbed it needs to be broken down into these singular building blocks called amino acids. These are then transported into the blood and used to make so many things in the body, including muscle and hormones. Now, the reason why this is really important for people with PCOS is because of the role the hormone insulin plays in up to 80% of PCOS cases. With that many people as insulin resistance as the root cause of their PCOS, it's really important to work out how to manage insulin resistance as early on in your treatment plan as possible. Simply put, insulin resistance happens when there is high glucose in the blood, the glucose triggers the release of insulin. And if blood sugar is constantly high, then insulin is constantly produced and eventually your cells get desensitized to insulin. When your cells are desensitized to insulin, the cells can't pull glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cells regulating your blood sugar levels. So this means if you have insulin resistance, you have unstable blood sugar levels, which leads to a whole range of health concerns. And since insulin is a hormone, when it's just disrupted and when the levels are imbalanced, it has a flow on effect to the other hormones in your body. Now, one way to increase your body's insulin sensitivity is to build muscle and eating protein supports healthy muscle growth. So by eating enough protein and supporting your muscles, you are actually helping to support your blood sugar levels by increasing your body's sensitivity to insulin. Now, when it comes to protein and its interaction with PCOS, there are four key roles that protein plays in help to manage your PCOS. The first is that protein keeps you full and reduces cravings. So protein is the most satiating macronutrient. This essentially means out of fats, carbs, and protein, protein is going to keep you fuller for longer. Protein does this by secreting hormones that signal fullness and aid with digestion. These hormones are cholecystokinin, peptide YY, and glucagon peptide like one. Next, as we mentioned already, it supports healthy muscle mass and metabolism. Skeletal muscle cells love glucose. This means the more muscle you have, the more glucose your body will absorb into cells and take out of the bloodstream. On top of this, protein also helps with your metabolism because it has a higher thermic effect. By just eating more protein, you can increase the amount of calories that you burn by up to 100 calories. Next is protein improves glycemic control. Protein is digested slowly and it's especially beneficial when it's consumed alongside other macronutrients, especially carbohydrates. Protein slows down the time it takes for the digestive system to release glucose into the bloodstream, meaning that you can avoid a higher blood sugar spike, which leads to worsening insulin resistance. And number four is it improves hormonal balance. As we've learned, protein triggers the release of hormones that regulate satiety, but it also triggers the release of another hormone called glucagon, which is a hormone that directly counteracts insulin. This means that by consuming protein, you can help to regulate the delicate balance between glucagon and insulin. Now let's get back to protein powders. So first of all, let me tell you, not all protein powders are made equal. And it can be a bit confusing when you're trying to figure out which one is going to suit you best. So let me tell you about the different kinds of protein powders and how they affect PCOS. Number one and most popular is whey protein. Even though whey protein is one of the most commonly sold proteins on the market, it may not be the best choice for those living with PCOS. Whey protein can have some detrimental effects to those living with PCOS because it can stimulate insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1. By stimulating IGF-1, it can go on to increase androgen production from the ovaries in those living with PCOS. And that leads to all those pesky PCOS symptoms like hair loss, facial hair growth, irregular cycles, and acne. So number two are plant-based proteins. Plant-based proteins are exactly as they sound, derived from plants. <laughs> 
the three most common types that you will see are pea, hemp, and soy. Any of these options or a combination of all three are a good choice for those living with PCOS. Pea protein specifically has a really good amino acid profile and its bioavailability is on par with animal derived protein powders. In saying that though, pea protein does lack the specific amino acid methionine. However, if you use a 50-50 blend of pea and hemp or rice protein, this will complete the amino acid profile. Number three is collagen powder. If you haven't heard of collagen powder before, let me be the first to introduce you. So collagen powders are rich in certain kinds of amino acids, which have such good health benefits. Collagen powder supports your joints, healthy hair growth, healthy nail growth, and it even helps to strengthen the wall of your gut. Nourished Inner Beauty Collagen Peptides is our collagen supplement blended with vitamin C, horsetail extract, and bamboo to provide all the extra benefits of collagen plus supporting glowing radiant hydrating skin sign me up and lastly we have casein powder casein protein powder is a complete protein and it's derived from dairy this is important to know if you have an intolerance with so many proteins on the market I am here to help you decide which one is best for you here are some things that you should consider when you're selecting your protein powder. Number one, it's important to be mindful of any intolerances, allergies, or just general food preference. Like we just discussed, casein is derived from dairy, which is a common allergen, as well as soy, which is another common allergen and is the base of many protein powders. As a general rule, here at Nourish Natural Health, we like to advise that you look out for beef, egg whites, pea or hemp protein, or a combination of all of these. Next, it's important to consider the quality and the purity of your protein powder. As we've mentioned, not all supplements are made the same. And some of them have been found to contain heavy metals in the past. And this is why it's really important to research the manufacturer before you purchase. You can do this by searching the manufacturer on the FDA website. You can search for things like past recalls or any past contaminations. Now, reading the label of your supplement is a must before you purchase. First, for those living with PCOS, it's important to choose a protein powder with less than four grams of carbohydrates per serving. Some protein powders contain a high amount of carbohydrate and some contain a low amount, so it's definitely important to check. It's also a good idea to look out for protein powders that contain natural sweeteners like stevia and trying to avoid ones that contain artificial sweeteners like aspartame. Some processed ingredients can also worsen inflammation, which for those living with PCOS is bad news because inflammation causes a lot of symptoms. You want to make sure that your protein powder doesn't contain any seed oils or any preservatives like BHT or BHA. Now, if all of this sounds overwhelming to you, please go see a nutritionist. Your nutritionist or your healthcare provider should be able to help you find a protein powder that fits within these standards. Some nutritionists may also ask for allergy testing to identify any common allergens like dairy or soy. Finally, let's look at dosage and timing. Now for successful PCOS management, protein should take up at least 30% of your daily caloric intake, but this can vary based on your activity levels. When it comes to the source of your protein, it's best to aim for a diverse range of proteins and then supplementing with protein powder if you need the extra helping hand. Some great sources of protein are chickpeas, tofu, black beans, fish, and eggs. When it comes to the timing, breakfast truly is the most important meal for the day for those who live with PCOS. By eating in the morning, not only are you making it easy to hit your protein target, but it's also one of the most impactful changes that you can make in your PCOS management journey. We recommend a PCOS repair breakfast, which contains a large amount of protein and low starchy veg. Things like eggs with kale and collagen powder mixed with spearmint tea. These are beautifully nourishing breakfasts to help support your PCOS without spiking insulin levels. This will slow down digestion and regulate blood sugar first thing in the morning. And it will give you a helping hand for the remainder of the day, keeping cravings at bay. Healthy fats are also really important to incorporate as they help to absorb some key vitamins into the bloodstream. Including some avocado or a drizzle of some olive oil goes a long way. So what's your favorite way of getting protein into your diet? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for coming along on this protein journey with me. I hope I have convinced you of the importance of a high protein diet for our PCOS sisters. As always, if you're looking for more support and guidance, please head over to the Nourish Natural Health website. Whilst you're there, you can take the quiz to find out what the underlying cause of your PCOS is, and then you can begin your PCOS management journey. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you won't miss the next video. And 
I will see you in the next one. Bye.